All right guys, in this tutorial I'm just going to quickly show you how to create a pleasing mud effect on your tank using pigments and Vallejo Brown Earth um, texture paint. Um, now this one I've completed earlier and I'm quite pleased with the way it looks. I like uh, the mud and the gunge and the varying different shades of brown achieved through the mediums I'm about to show you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this tank I completed a long time ago and um, as you can see I put this mud on using a little bit of uh, textured coating and some airbrush colours but this time around I'm going to intensify the mud the texture firstly and then we're going to apply our colours with the pigments so okay then guys let's get ready to go okay then as I said earlier we're going to be using Vallejo's brown uh, uh, paste it's called you get a big ass tub and it's really good. I've just got an old brush here. And what I'm going to do is put a generous amount on the brush, guys. And I'm going to concentrate on the lower part of the tank and just going to crazily dab it all over. What I want to be aiming to do here is pretty much cover most of the area up that I did with the airbrush. Uh, mainly the colouring just to blend it in a lot more I don't mind that it's going to look really muddy and messy because I like that look for the, the lunar balls as you can see I'm just basically dabbing it on there's no exact science you can just put it on any old how and uh, I'll go ahead and complete this stage and once it's done I plan on drying it with a hair dryer. Okay, so I've gone around the entire tank now. And what I plan on doing now is giving this a good blast with a hair dryer so it's nice and dry. And then we'll be back. Okay, guys, so that's dried now. I've given it for a uh, drying with the hair dryer. Um, also, a point to note is it's, once this is dry, I mean, it's a little bit tacky at the moment, but once it is dry, um, it's always best to apply pigments to a matte surface and this does dry fairly matte so it's going to adhere quite nicely. Today I'm going to be using MIG pigments and the first one I'm going to be using is MIG Dark Mud. Fantastic pigments. So what I do generally do at this point guys, as you can see the tissue, applying pigments is a messy job so I get myself a little palette and I'll just put some pigment using an old brush in the tray. Now this is the first primary mud colour I'm going to use so the coverage on this is going to be quite significant and just dab it in, work it on, try not to you know spread it too far up the tank because you don't want it everywhere. But what I'm going to do is cover all of the areas that I've just put on with the Vallejo paste and what I love about it is the, the texture that shows through underneath the pigment. By using this Vallejo paste, you can cut out mixing the pigments with, um, what is it? I think they're use liquid resin, isn't it, or something like that. I forget exactly what it's called. But um, yeah, you can pretty much see what I'm doing, guys. And already it's forming a quite a realistic caked look to the mud. I'm really liking uh, this method. Plus also you're not actually applying paint or colour are you and you can get a very nice blend to the edge of uh, the mud to the tank hole if that makes sense. So yeah I'm going to carry on and apply this now as you can see I like the effect so far. 
and uh, I'll go all around the tank and then we'll be back. Okay, so I've been around the entire model now and applied the uh, dark mud. As you can see, it's blended really nicely with the texture. You can see lots of texture showing through. Now what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna move to MIG uh, Europe Dust. It's a much lighter tone. Um, but the old point is I want some contrasting colours now a bit of variation in the mud splatter so back with the old palette that should be more than enough because this time around we're actually applying a lot less pigment like I say sporadically around the model the model every now and again to blend this in. Don't be frightened to work the different colours in a little bit more than when you did the, um, the dark mud because some of the lighter pigments will look a bit odd if you don't blend them in a little bit. There's no exact science to it. Just put a little bit of lighter colour where you think it will benefit from it. Okay, so that's the uh, Europe dust been applied. Now, I think what I'll do here now is I'm going to use a bit of MIG rubble dust, which is a very slightly different colour, guys. As you can see, that's the rubble dust, and that's what we're going to be using now. I'm essentially going to be doing the same thing, going all around the model, and I will only be applying a very small amount of the rubble dust. That should be all that we would possibly need for what I'm about to do. And once again, work through that this colour because it's one of the lighter ones. I'll work this in up towards the top end of the armour to signify drier mud, especially around the door there. All the little subtle changes in colour will invariably make quite a difference to the way the tank looks. Let's just go all the way around it now. nice okay and I'm just going to finish off now with a little bit of Vietnam Earth from MIG uh, it's quite an orangey looking colour very like a, a wet mud and I'm just going to put a very small amount of this on the model because it is quite a contrasting colour to what we've been using so I'll make sure that my brush isn't too too loaded and we'll just try an experimental bit here and there. That's nice. Just a little bit. You can see I'm putting a very small amount on. Just to give it that bit of extra definition. Of course, you can vary your your colours of pigments to give sort of like dependent on the terrain. You know, whether you want it to look exceptionally wet and muddy or dusty and arid. It's all down to your choice of colours, really. But yeah, okay, guys, I'm just going to clean up and we'll be back. 
Okay, so all the mud effect pigments is on there now, and uh, I'm quite pleased with that. What we need to do now is fix it. There's lots of different ways you can do this. One of my favourites is, is just to spray uh, a Vallejo matte varnish over the top of it. But uh, in this instance, because I've got it to hand, I'm going to use AK Pigment Fixer. Only because that's pretty much where it is. Nice big soft brush. Let the pigment soak straight into the bristles. And literally, all I'm going to do is dab the area. As you can see, spreads very easily. And make sure I get the whole of the area that I've uh, just applied some pigments to. Try not to drag your brush over the pigments because it will tend to disturb them. Okay, so I've dried that now, and uh, what I've found is that I'm not quite happy with it yet. I want there to be a few more lighter patches of dried mud on it. So what I've decided to do, guys, is use MIG dry mud, ironically enough, and I'm going to apply some to my palette here, and we're just going to blast through this now. Same procedures as before. Only this time, I'm going to be a little bit more heavier. And I'm not rubbing it in so much because I want pockets of it to show quite significantly. Very often, when applying pigments, you have to do it in more than one layer. Seal them in. And do a bit more, you know, until pretty much you've got the look of what you was after. Okay, so what we'll do now, guys, I'm going to get my pigment fixer again, and we'll give it another going over just to see all those colours in that I've just put on. see what's happened then, whether or not I'm satisfied with the colour. Okay, let's give it a dry. And there you have it guys, the finished product. It's uh, been sealed in now. And, uh, yeah, it's a little bit light in certain areas, probably benefit from a, a matte varnish, which is what I do generally do with my models, but as you can see it does give it a very good realistic mud effect. Uh, thing to note, when you do use pigment fixer, although you know, you'll know you have a lot of people say that it maintains its original colour when it's dry, I always find it's still, in many cases, dependent on the colour you're using. Uh, darkens down a little bit so to a hundred percent avoid that I think what I generally would do is uh, put a matte varnish over the top uh, you're better off experimenting with satin or matte so what uh, you reckon I've gone a bit heavier with the mud on this model deliberately but that's okay because uh, you know it was for tutorial purposes really um, but it does bring it more in line with the mud on the previous tank that I displayed. So yeah, cheers guys, stick around to see what pigments uh, I use and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>